all seated once they were positioned where they belonged, every one of them. Jesus took the bread and likewise also the loaves and he blessed and he broke and gave to the disciples and the disciples to the multitude and they were all fed. But the natural had to be taken care of first. Go back to the marriage supper that was held in Cana in Galilee. A wedding. And the mother of Jesus came to him and said, they have no wine. Now, why did she say that to him? She was looking for a glass of wine. The party hadn't even gotten started yet. He said to her, woman, what have I to do with thee? My time has not yet come. She said to those that stood by, whatsoever he tells you, do it. Now, there were six water pots of stone there after the manner of the purifying of the Jews. Water pots for the purpose of putting water for the purification site, purification uh, ritual. And those water pots, the six water pots, contain two or three firkins apiece. So let's assume that three of them contain two firkins and three of them contain three. A firkin equaled about 60 gallons. And there was two, 120 gallons times three. That's 360 gallons in the smallest pots. Then there were three firkins in each of the taller ones, 90 gallons times three, 270 gallons. So how many was in the first three? Do the math a little bit here. 60 gallons. And there were two firkins. It's 120 times three, 360 gallons. 90 gallons times three. No, 60 gallons times three firkins, 180 times three. Add those two numbers together. 540 and what did we say? 360? 900. They didn't have water hoses in those days. They had to go to a well and dip. Jesus said, fill the water pots to the brim. Now, how much work did it take? A gallon of water is eight and a little bit pounds per gallon times 900, and how many? Times eight gallons, times, times uh, eight pounds. How many pounds of material was moved by hand? You think several boys all got together and did that? Bunches. They filled the water pots to the brim. That was a lot of work that had to be done first. Don't you know it took enough time till finally they got to question, what is he doing? And who is he to tell us what to do anyway? Except that little woman said, whatever he tells you, you do it. Well, they got the water pots finally filled to the brim. Then Jesus said, now bear out to the governor of the feast. So they dipped and filled the glass full of perfect vintage red wine and took it to the governor of the
the feast. And so they all began to drink. And he said, well, I tell you, usually men uh, will bring out that which is best. And then that when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But you've saved the best for last. Vintage aged wine. Miracle, wasn't it? Took a lot of work to get those water pots full of first. Natural things need attended to. And then God will move. Pray together. Father, we lift our hands to you. We lift our heart to you. We put our attention on you tonight, sir. We listen, Spirit of God, for what you have to say. We listen attentive, attentively, and with great intention to what the voice of the Spirit of God is saying in what we say tonight. Teacher of the church, rise up, live big within me, and speak. Speak, as it were, the oracles of God. Yes, right, that's what he said. And I have somewhat to say concerning that which men have called revivals in the land that take place before your eyes. And I would remind you that the Spirit will be poured out upon all flesh in the last days, saith the Lord. And your sons and your daughters will prophesy. And your old men will dream dreams. And your young men will see visions. And upon my servants and upon my handmaidens I'll pour out in those days, saith the Lord. And they shall prophesy. And I shall show wonders in the heavens above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and pillars of smoke before the great and notable day of the Lord doth come. I said these days would come. Men think these days come as a result of perfect living and perfect, excellent character by those to whom he visits. But if that were true, he wouldn't have visited anyone. He'll visit in the darkest of places. He'll visit where the darkness is the darkest, and they which do things cannot even speak of those things, for it is a shame to speak of those things which are done of them in the darkness. And he'll move among the darkness and bring the light, because that's where it shines, in the darkest of places. So when you see these things, rejoice. And don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. And these things will rise up, and you'll see them rise up here, and you'll see them rise up there, and you'll see them rise up in this corner over here, and you'll see them rise up way, 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 way over there. 
and they'll communicate one with another and compare notes and find that he that walks among the churches is walking among the places that they never thought he would walk, where he can go where he pleases. And he'll open doors no man can shut, and he will shut doors that no man can open. For these are the days of great victory. These are the days of great triumph. These are the days when you'll find that your faith will work much more easily than they've worked. it's worked in days past because you're exercised thereby and you know what to do and you know what to say and you, oh, 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 don't thwart the plan by being haughty and putting yourself first and speaking disparagingly to those who would come and be involved. And don't second guess their motivations, for I do send them to you. I'll send them to help you with what you call revival. I call it the moving of my spirit among you, the pouring out of my spirit upon all flesh. I call it these things. You'll see it. You'll see it rise up. You'll see it bring great healing and great deliverance because it is the hand of the Most High God that doth and work and is not shortened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like, a, it's, like a, it's like a heavy rain cloud bulging, a heavy, heavy rain cloud coming down. Just before it bursts, just before, it will appear darkness. It will appear heavy. It will seem like the atmospheric pressure is unbearable. But then, a flood, a trickle, a stream, a river, and then a great flood. And it will pour open into the coastal plains and it'll pour open into the great plains of the West and it'll pour open into the great and flood the streets of the inner cities and you'll see it here and you'll see it there. I know it. 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 Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and just lift your hands and rejoice. You're going to see these things take place before your eyes. You'll see them with your own eyes. And you'll say it's been said that these, these things would happen. As you've spoken in my ears, so will I do unto you. There will be a performance of those things which were spoken, saith the Lord. Yes. I'm on again, Shunkum. I'm on again, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I'll flood the poverty stricken areas with great prosperity. Yes, I will. And great prosperity. Did I not say that the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor? Expect the gospel to be preached in the poorest sections of your city in the poorest sections of your neighborhoods, in the poorest sections, places you would dare not drive, especially at night, places you certainly wouldn't walk. Some of you are afraid to walk in the open parking lots of the big box stores of your city at night because you're afraid. Well, those are the places where I'm going to flood and bless. And there will be street preachers out in the middle of those parking lots. And you'll see them here and you'll see them there. And you'll see them praying with people throughout the parking lots of these big box stores. Watch it. Watch it. Anticipate it with great anticipation. You'll see these things come. Yes, they'll come to pass. Mm -hmm. And those places where all they had was food stamps and government assistance, they'll cast that away. They'll not need that any longer. Uh Uh-uh. No. Because they'll be blessed by the hand of the Most High God. The hand of great prosperity will be given to them. And they'll have knowledge of witty inventions themselves. And they'll say to great businessmen, I once was blind, now I see. I once was poor, but now he who was rich 
became poor that I through his poverty might become rich. You'll see these things with your eyes. They'll take place before you and you'll see them. And it'll be causing a great rejoicing in that day. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 It'll happen. You'll see it. You'll see it right here. Just the removal of the IV and the removal of the oxygen mask and get out of the bed and get dressed and go home. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you'll hear it. You'll hear it. If they don't get more patience in that hospital, they're going to have to shut it down. You'll hear it. You'll hear it. You'll hear it said. You'll hear it said. Vacant rooms in hospitals in the inner cities. Mm, never have I heard it on this wise. You can't separate prosperity from healing. They run hand in hand. They hold hands and they gallop together. They hold hands and they skip together. Ah, you should come out. Oh, ring again, you sink about in the book so called my car. Mm, yeah, my son, my coder now. And go so go to my coder now. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Yeah, yeah. And there'll be those that have desired to play instruments, play any musical instruments for years, have never been able to, had no natural ability, suddenly sit and learn to play within just a matter of a few minutes and a few hours. And before you know it, they play like a concert pianist. You'll see these things take place. There'll be a speeding up, as it were, of talent and giftings. Men, what men call talent, giftings. I'll teach supernaturally, and there'll be great rejoicing. Great, great rejoicing. For there has never been in the earth enough people to play the instrumentation that I have granted to the earth. There'll be those that'll fill those places and play and worship. And worship will be a thing to be seen in the inner cities and in the malls of America, you'll just walk in and someone's playing a piano right out in the middle of the mall. And rejoicing takes place and people gather around and begin to sing, how great, <laughs> how great, how great thou art. It will be played in the rotunda in the middle of the malls of America. And there'll, it'll be what seemed like just places of revenue and just places of merchandise will become houses of worship before your eyes. And you'll see it. And it'll be, first of all, not carried by the news media, but then they'll have to carry it. And it'll be seen. I'm going to go see you. Okay, so Korean. These things seem strange to you. These things seem unbelievable to you. Well, I'll break past unbelief and do it anyway. Yeah. Haven't you prayed thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven? Well, expect it. Expect it. Expect it in the earth as it is in heaven. Expect it. These worship services go on all the time in all places and in every quadrant in heaven. All the time. Ah, man, go go sing gigi, you should go back and get some go back. Sing Vrian man, go make up some ball. Go go Vrian the man, go sing go make up some. Sing Vrian the man, separation of church and state. <laughs> yeah, but you can't separate the between God and men. There's no separation between God and men. And go go sing go in the back over and make up some. And so go Vrian, I would remind you that the state is the state of the people not the state of the government. Did I not say that the government would be on his shoulder? That his name would be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, and upon his increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end? Did I not say these things? The government will be on his shoulder. 
He'll carry the government, and you'll see him walk the corridors of your government. Yes, walk the corridors of your federal law places. You'll see him walk the corridors and walk into the great courtrooms of your federal court systems, and he'll see to people that you didn't think he would see. He, he will judge in righteousness and judge in your federal systems. Yeah, I'm going to sing. Yeah, I'm going to sing. Go read the Bible. I'm going to 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 read the Bible. Oh, they're going to scream separation of church and state. The whole time there's a national cathedral right in downtown Washington. I'm going to sing. I'm going to read now. I'm going to read the Bible. They that speak hypocritically do so at their own peril. And I would remind you that he that observes lying vanities shall forsake his own mercy. Yeah, sometimes watching the news media is just observing a lying vanity. If you'll ask me, I'll give you the news before it happens. You'll know it before it goes down. You'll know it before it's reported. In fact, you'll report it early, and you may even get a knock on your door. And someone asks you, how did you know these things in the middle of an investigation? And in that day, you'll say, I knew that long before you, you found out about it. How did you know these things? And you'll say to them, careful that you don't speak evil against the king, lest a bird of the air come and fly and tell the matter. And go so the butter because someone curse not the king in your not even in your bedchamber. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, the rain clouds are building in places, in the driest of places, prayers and crying out until I have moved and moved and moved until now they're Showers and showers and showers and showers of blessing and showers of floods of blessing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you'll see it. Yeah, it'll be up to your waist. It'll flood over your loins. It'll come up over your head, and you'll be caught up in the flow of it. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light and come to the brightness of your glory. You hear how the tongue just changed? And they that would hold weapons up against each other are now going to learn to turn and defend each other with the same weaponry. I'll turn disagreement into agreement. And in enmity into that which is peace. You'll see it with your eyes. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'll say it. I hesitate, but I will. I'll say it. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, the Crips and the Bloods will then cut covenant. And become brethren. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh-huh. I'll say these things that you understand. There are thousands, as it were, examples. But have you heard recently any feuding between the Hatfields and the McCoys? No, I entered into that years ago and brought the enmity apart and made friends between the families. I'll do that again, family after family, enemy after enemy, and they'll cut covenant and agree one with another, and enmity will be stopped. And where there was great fighting, there'll be great love. I got you go I'm a yeah, I ended that feud years ago. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll say it. I hesitate, but I'll say it. Mmm. Ngo. Shingo. Sangama. Ngo riyana ma koryo. Ngo riyana na koryo. There'll be no distinction between Sunni and Shiite. Well, they will come together under the banner of the Lord Jesus, and I will prov- provoke the Jew to jealousy by that union, saith the Lord. Well, I still see, I still see that cloud. Mm. Bulging like a thin membrane. And you think if it breaks, it's just going to kill everything below it. It will kill every darkness below it. Mm. Big, thin, thin membrane, full of water. Just full. My God. My God, no telling what it weighs. Stick a pin in it. Mm. Boom. Thunderous, thunderous, thunderous crash. Crash. Flooding everything out below it with great, great force. My God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'll come flooding right by you. Shikuyo Shugo Makasan. Well, oh. Wow, how long have we been talking? Has that been a half hour? I wish preaching was that easy. Hmm. 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 Oh, so good, yes, it do. Hmm. Well, you just saw a demonstration of how you can pray at home. Just pray and let him fill your mouth. And as he says things, write it down and watch it when it comes to pass. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it will be around the central portion of your home, the subject matter. Because I hold a pulpit in a city, I'll speak of the things concerning the city. Because he's given me authority to do so. Sometimes these things just won't come to pass until someone says them. So we'll say these things. We'll speak these things. What will you that I should do? What will you that you should see? What will you that you should have? What will you? What will you? How will it be? How shall it be? How do you desire it to be? Prophesy these things. For I say you're the prophet of your own life. You are they which spoke these things before and they came to pass. And you'll speak them again. And come to pass, they will. And go so go, you should go. And go so go, and they go so. You should go in the butter, so go, Papa. And you should go in the butter, so go. For it's always been so. And go so, she go in the butter, so go. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's a good way, you go so. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.
<laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it won't be a political party that brought it to you. And it won't be a political party that took it away from you. Mm-hmm. Uh-uh. <laughs> It'll be the grandest Holy Ghost party you've ever seen in your life. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Racism. Spirit of division is all it is. It's a little, it's a little, little piddly demon. Flick him away by the word of knowledge. In Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, he knew you'd be here when you were this age. That's why he prepared you for it when you were a child. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yes, I see, I see it. I see a beautiful grand piano in the middle of a mall with a decorative fencing around it. Do not touch. Yeah. Someone will come and just remove that sign and open the gate and go in and start playing. And the playing will go until the hour they close the mall. And then it'll be known that when you go to that place, someone's there playing. And you'll go and you'll have lunch around that beautiful grand piano and listen and worship. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you will. They'll even begin to put the food court around it. Man, go so cold again, then go so Uh-huh, go so good. Indeed, she could go go to the go so go go in the go Uh-huh. Yeah. People show up with their tambourines. Mm-hmm. 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 And someone will say, why haven't we done this before now? Do these things seem strange to you? No. I'm just coming out of the spirit back in the natural here a little bit. It seemed like, what did I just say? What am I doing? No, some. No, some. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. I'm going to go to the next one. Peace, peace, peace within thy walls. Prosperity, prosperity within thy palaces. Peace, peace within thy walls. Prosperity within thy palaces. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah, many of you have houses that have so much square footage you hadn't even been in some some places in your house in five years. Hadn't even been there, hadn't even physically been there, but forgot that room existed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's going to become common. It's going to become common. It's going to become common. Mm-hmm. He's given you wisdom. Wisdom to know how to deal with your financial affairs. Supernatural wisdom coming to you from this night forward. Hallelujah. From tonight at 639. He's just infused that into you by the words of my mouth. 
Oh, so cool, cool, you in the back of some cool, you know, mm-hmm. And you do an inventory of everything that belongs to you. And you do away with that which is unpleasant to you and replace it with that which pleases your eye. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You'll start laying things straight. <laughs> so, Pastor, I don't understand these things. Well, I don't necessarily either. <clears throat> but he does. He knows what he's saying. He knows what he's doing among you. Amen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's delivering pleasant things to you. Yes. Pleasing to your eyes and pleasing to your ears and pleasing to your smell and pleasing to your presence. Pleasant things. Pleasant things. Pleasant things. Pleasant things. Mm-hmm. Pleasures forevermore. I believe that's in the 16th Psalm. Pleasures forevermore. Write that in your notes. Pleasures forevermore being delivered to me tonight. Angels are bringing pleasant things to your homes right now in Jesus' name while you're gone. Just walk right in the door. Deliver pleasant things to you. Things pleasing to you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And there's a desire in your heart that you've had for some time. And he's delivering that desire to you. Mm-hmm. And give you the desire of your heart. Yes, he will. Because he loves you. And he wants to show you his fatherhood. And give to his daughter because he loves you. Just thank him for it. Just turn and thank, just return thanks to him. Just return thanks to him. I'll tell you, it keeps you in the flow. A thankful heart keeps the flow of his blessing flowing to you. Oh, you think you'd do that? You'd do that? Would you do that? Is that what you'd do for me? Lord, I know it. I know I'd love to see that happen again. You know, I know. I, I, I know it. But that, that, oh, I'll not say that. I won't say that. I just won't, I won't get, uh uh-uh. I won't give, I won't give verse to that. I won't give voice to that. I shouldn't go, shouldn't go anything though. Oh, yeah, I know it. Hmm, no, no, Sunday, he said. Lord of mercy. Oh, great mercy. Well, I'll say it. It's, it's, I question, should I say it? But I'll say it. Oh. I, I just, I don't get so. Speaking desires of your heart. Oh, I so go by Shingama. Oh, Lama go Sundo Shipa. I'll return people to your life that have been removed from you and otherwise separated from you, but I'll return them in peace and in honor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Mm, go shingan that which hath been divinely directed and put together that was torn apart. I'll bring back together. And this time it'll be forever. I see his face. I see his face. Oh, 
Oh, I don't know how you'll do it, but you'll do it. I don't know how you'd do that. Yes. Only you could do that. Man. Oh, go sing it. Go song. They sick of all songs. Mmm. Divine connections torn apart, restored. <laughs> oh, I'm going to sing the Hishimba. Uh-huh. And you'll pick up where you left off and move in the spirit. Oh, so go again. That takes on. Great miracles will take place. Hmm. Oh, I know. I go some go in that day. She go in like a song. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be a sensitive thing. Yeah. Oh, so go in that. So go in that. No, go some. Mmm. I go go in that. Go some. I know I'm around the edge of saying it. Oh, I'm going to come right up to the door. I have not opened the door to say in that yet. That's like, oh, yeah, go home. That would be something to say. I'll go for some good, yeah, go home. Mmm, I'll go for some good, yeah, go home. Mm-hmm. I know it. I'll go for good, yeah, now. Do I step across that threshold? Well, We're going to take a break, and we'll be back in just a little bit. Word Wise Bible College, second hour, coming up in just a few minutes. Stay tuned.
Are we ready? <laughs> All right. Let's move back over in the spirit, shall we? And discuss these things by the spirit. Did you know God's word will work for you? It works for you. It's given to you. His word is the children's bread. <clears throat> We've read it so much, we're jaded. We've talked about it so much, we don't even hear it anymore. So I want you to act like you've never heard this even one time in your life. Turn to the 11th chapter of the book of Mark. You've never heard this. This is the first time. Ever read something? Ever had something happen so wonderful that you thought you'd never forget it, and the next time you did it, it was like the first time again? <laughs> oh. It's always the first time. Well, this is the first time you've heard this. <clears throat> Mark 20, 11, verse 22, Jesus said, Have faith in God. What he's about to show you is a godly thing. It is a thing of God. This is going to be God teaching men how he operates and wants us to operate just like him. What is that element in the Lord's Prayer? Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Do you girls still... Um, have opportunity to make plaques and things like that. I want you to make me one. I want it to be rustic, go to the cabin, and I want it to say in good bold letters, in Cave Spring, as it is in heaven. Just a rustic plaque. Let's do that. And we'll put it out there. Okay. Yeah. And it'll be in Cave Spring, Georgia, as it is in heaven. Okay. Cave Spring, Georgia, as it is in heaven. Yeah, you can do that. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Now, here's what Jesus said. Have faith in God. This is God. God have faith in the way God does things. Let's don't do it our way. Let's do it his way. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, who shall say unto this mountain, already he's telling you to do something that men just don't do. Men just do not talk to things <clears throat> until they're on their computer. And they'll tap on something. Oh, now why did it do that? You stupid thing. Now, why are you going there? You go to talking to the computer. <clears throat> don't you? I don't know why it did that. What are you doing? You ask it a question. You just ask the computer a question. So I'm telling you, these things are not all that strange. If you say to this mountain... Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And shall not doubt in your heart, but shall believe that those things which you say shall come to pass. You shall have whatsoever you say. Now, here's what I want you to do. <clears throat> Write in your notes. Take a clean page, a new page for this. A whole new page. And at the top, write. Write. 
I will prepare a speech. And before I say a word, I will believe that every word I say will come to pass. Now, what's the speech? You should have had one of these already. <clears throat> now, let me see how you wrote it. We're in class, ladies and gentlemen. I'm looking at the paper of one of my students. I will prepare a speech, and before I say a word, I will believe that every word I say will come to pass. Now, let us prepare speech. What is the number one thing that you want to see come to pass? You want us to write a question? What is the number one thing? Mm -mm. I want you to think of what the number one thing is you want to see come to pass and write it in a speech. Don't say a word about it, just write it. Just can be a single line. Hey, what? Because, <laughs> see, you're about to pull the trigger. And when you do, your words are going to fly out of your mouth like a bullet out of a pistol, and it will affect things. Take another sheet of paper. Just, just flip over one and start a new sheet of paper. And write, I will prepare speech for Pastor John. <laughs> for me only. For me only. This is called Pastor's Privilege. I get everybody to do this for me. <laughs> And before I say a word, I will believe that every word will come to pass. Everything I say will come to pass. Did you know the words of a pastor affect people? Boy, that is an understatement. Did you know that the words of a congregation affect a pastor? Boy, that is, a, that is an understatement. You know, the best thing I can do to reap good words from the sheep, sow good words, to the sheep. <clears throat> now these are the words that I say over y'all. All of my students and all of my children and all of my congregation is taught of the Lord and great is their peace and undisturbed composure. 
Every one of my students and all of my sheep and all of my children prosper and are in health even as their souls are prospering. All of my people have savings accounts and they're growing. I'm just telling you what I say. All of my people have savings accounts and they're growing. All of my people are financially inflating faster than these inflationary times. All of my congregation have peace in their hearts and no anxiety and no panic and no mental distress. All of my people are debt free. Debt free. All right, now go back to your, your page. You just keep that when you write down things you desire for me to have. You write them down for me. All of them or just one thing? I mean, write a blue streak, sister. <laughs> okay. <laughs> one thing on the okay. One thing. I got out and stood in front of my burned up Buick the other day and pointed at it and I said, I am bringing you back to your original glory. Here's what I know. Psalm 66, 12, I told it. Psalm 66, 12 says he brought us through fire and flood and brought us out into our wealthy place. He said, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee, for I am the Lord thy God. Now, that's a simple thing, but it's an, it's an inanimate object. It is my mountain. Okay. So I'm saying to this mountain, devastation be removed and be cast into the sea. I'm going to drive that thing and have it written up in Hot Rod magazine. <clears throat> who, who in here can tell me you'd eat? Easily like to have a little more money than you have right now. Easily. Wouldn't you like to easily have it? Do you know what you know what the reason is to have a job? Scripture says, so you can have to give to him that needeth. There's a reason for it. Because God's not bound by your job to give to bless you. He'll bless you. He, he's got plenty. He just bless you. Find ways to bless you. See? Keeps your hands moving so you can be a blessing to other people. Do your alms in secret. <clears throat> I talked about it this morning. I got to talk about it again. So, do you believe for your healing? That's what he said to me Wednesday night. I got home. Did you believe for your healing? I said, oh, Yeah, yeah, come here. He showed me this verse of scripture. He said, show me where you believe for your healing. Well, you know, five stripes and heal. I was real tentative. He showed me that verse of scripture in Mark. Right here. See it right there. Why don't you put your eyes right on the 23rd verse a minute. Don't take your eyes off of it. Put your eyes on the 23rd verse. Don't take your eyes off of it. Now, who's talking? Jesus. Who? Who's talking? Jesus. Has he ever told a lie? No. Whosoever shall say unto this current mountain that is in front of you, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. 
and shall not doubt in his heart. See, that's the part you think right there it's real hard to do. Very easy, very easy. He's not saying for you to believe that the mountain's going to go into the ocean. He's saying you say the mountain be removed and cast into the sea and don't doubt that what your words are saying are going to come to pass. Do not doubt in your heart, but believe that those things which you say. I don't have to move the mountain. I just have to say it. The moving of the mountain's his part. See? See the difference? It's real overwhelming to read that verse of Scripture until you see that it's very simple that just say to the mountain. So it's just, an action, right? just when you open your mouth, leave the rest to him. You've heard the old saying, go greyhound and leave the driving to us. Speak this and leave the results to him. I believe, I've said my part. I believe that, <laughs> I believe that what I say comes to pass. I don't, he said to me, you believe for your healing? He showed me this. He said, anywhere in there I tell you to believe for your healing? I, I, was there anywhere in there I told you to believe for your healing? I said, I told you to believe that those things that you say will come to pass. I'll have whatsoever I say if I believe that those things which I say shall come to pass. When something comes to pass, isn't it wonderful? Yes. Isn't it wonderful when something you really would desire comes to pass? Isn't that wonderful? wonderful? Isn't it wonderful? Do you know what it does when you read what Jesus said for you to do and you say what he said to do and what he said what you, to, for you to say comes to pass? You know what it does for you and him? It makes him real to you. It makes him very real to you. See, there's a, there's a closeness in my fellowship with him because he told me to say this, and I said it, and it came to pass. So the things I speak over my past should easily come to pass. Anything you say, you say those things. You say those things. The only difference that you run into with people is they may be saying something contrary. That's, that's okay. Probably okay. But it, things that have nothing to do with anybody else that I say come to pass, inanimate objects. Listen, this is not hocus pocus. This is not metaphysicalism. This is not, what is that real popular, goofy religion that the Hollywood stars are all into? Yes, it's not that either. This is, this is just strictly say, having faith in God. He spoke, made things come to pass. He tells you. When he breathed the breath of life into Adam, the scripture says he became a living soul. The original Hebrew says he became a speaking spirit. He made Adam just like him. A speaking spirit. So, it's Wednesday night. So, do you believe for your healing? Yeah. Come here. Show me where you believe for your healing. That whatsoever you believe for your healing will come to pass. He didn't say that. He told me to speak to the mountain. I thought, he said, you know this. Son, you know this. So what should you have done? I'm laying in that bed. This mountain. Infection. Inflammation. Be thou removed and be cast into the sea. I believe that what I say comes to pass. I do not doubt in my heart. But those things which I say come to pass, I have whatsoever I say. Infection come out of me and be removed and cast into the sea. We'll see before, on Saturday morning when I woke up, felt like I'd been run over by a tractor trailer truck, and my, I checked my temperature, and it was 101.5. Sound like a country station. Yeah, I did too. Thought I was on fire in my throat and chest. Head was pounding. 
I thought, boy, this is, this is serious. This is on. And I knew I needed to make some kind of a confession. So I said, who his own self bore my sins in his own body on the tree, that being dead to sins, I should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes I was healed. And you know what? I didn't believe one thing that I just said. I did not believe it. <clears throat> you know what I did believe? My head was on fire, and my head was pounding, and my throat felt like two knives were stuck in the back of it. I believed that. Yeah. I didn't believe one thing I said. He said, but doubt not in your heart, but believe those things which you say will come to pass. You will have whatsoever you say. Okay, he straightened me up by Thursday night. I still, I mean, Wednesday night at home, I still felt like I'd been warmed over. <laughs> so from that moment, I began to say, okay, I'm about to say something I believe. In the light of what he's saying here, this mountain is this infection in me. In Jesus' name, you infection in Jesus' name, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. I do not doubt in my heart. I believe those things which I say is coming to pass. I have whatsoever I say. Well, my body began to mend immediately. I could have had it Saturday morning. But know what did I do? I languished on the bed of unbelief. You know, God is not at all moved by how you feel. He's moved by faith. Don't God know I hurt? <laughs> Don't he know I feel bad? <laughs> it doesn't matter what, it, you know what? It don't matter how bad you feel. You can decide before you say something. Didn't you write down? What'd you, what, write down, say out loud what I had you, had you write down. What, what'd you say at top? I will prepare a speech, and before I say a word, I will believe every word I say comes to pass. Did you know that if you pull your pistol and you get ready to pull the trigger, it's about to make a noise, isn't it? And it's about to affect something, isn't it? You believe that when the report of that barrel says something, that something's going to change, don't you? It will accomplish that which I've sent it to do. Okay. Same way now with the words of your mouth. Your words are powerful. They got, they're bullets. I'm about to say something. Write a list of the most, it doesn't matter how outlandish it is. Just write the things you want to see come to pass. Get them written. And before you say a word, say, I believe Everything I'm about to say will come to pass. <clears throat> it's the law of faith. It's going to be this way all through heaven, all the rest of eternity. Our words will be powerful. They're, our, they're powerful now. <clears throat> Did you learn something tonight? You learned it again, didn't you? Did you hear it for the first time? Very first time. Very first time. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. Before we close up, I text you all and I promised you what I was going to say to you tonight. So I'm going to start it right here. I want you to listen carefully. We've talked about the saying part of faith. Now I want to make a distinction between saying and praying. Okay. In the 24th verse, Jesus said, therefore, I say unto you, because, because everything I say comes to pass, I'll say to you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them, and you shall have them. The sixth point in the study of faith is that faith will work by saying without praying. Faith will work by saying without praying, because what you say is what you pray. Did you know the 23rd verse never said, said one word about prayer or praying? Not one word about prayer in verse 23. Certainly faith works in prayer, but when you pray it, you still have to say it, don't you? Okay. <clears throat> Notice he didn't say that he shall have whatsoever he prayeth. He said he will have whatsoever he saith. 
Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, oh. When we're only a few words away from victory, why don't we open our mouth? When we're just a few words away from victory, when we're just a few words away from receiving from God, why do we keep our mouths closed? He says, so you believe for your healing? I said, yeah. Come here. Here's what I was doing. I was laying there believing. How long are you going to lay there and hurt while you're believing? Open your mouth, John. That's what he was saying. Can you believe I had to be taught this? I can't believe it. All right. There's something here I wanted to read to you out of a story that, that um, he told here, and I want to share this with you. Using your faith for your finances. Who would like to use your faith for your money? I want only, I just want money. I want the money that faith brings to me because that, that's sure. He said, personally, I have not prayed about money for many years. How would that be good? When's the last time you prayed for money? Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Have you ever done that? Okay. He said, and I've never been without it. He said, I never pray about money. I just always say the money will come. Oh, that's worth writing down right there. The money will come. And here it comes. He said, I remember on one occasion years ago, I needed $1,500 by the end of the month. So I said, by the first of the month, I'll have $1,500. By the first of the month, I will have $1,500. By the first of the month, I will have $1,500. By the first of the month, I will have $1,500. That's what he said. He said. He said. Okay. I kept saying it at different times in prayer. I just said, by the first of the month, I'll have $1,500. Well, the first of the month came. I had $1,580 and I had $80 more than I claimed. <laughs> the Lord actually taught me how to do that, how to use my faith for, for finances. For years, I hadn't seen it. I'd been saved and then healed by the power of God as a young Baptist boy, but I never thought about using my faith beyond salvation or healing. Many people have gotten saved, but they've never thought about using their faith beyond believing God for salvation. He said, even in prayer, they don't use their faith. They always struggle. There's always a struggle with them. <clears throat> They're always begging, crying, bawling, squalling, scratching and pulling, and they get nothing. They stay defeated. You know why? I don't know why, but in my early, early in my ministry, I went along for several years and never had anything because I didn't believe for anything much financially or materially. The last church, he said, I pastored was from 1946 over into 1949. My church was adequate. They took care of me. I think sometimes in situations like that, you don't have to do much believing. You just expect the church to take care of you. But the Lord dealt with me, and I left my church and went out on the field, and I had a struggle for the first year. I went to the Lord in prayer about the situation. I said, now, Lord, I did what you said to do. I mean, there wasn't even a shadow of doubt about it. If I had a shadow of doubt about going out in the field and leaving my church, I wouldn't have even waited. I would I wouldn't have even dealt with the doubt. I, I'd have taken advantage of the shadow and just stayed put. That's what he said. I just never would have left. Didn't have a shadow of a doubt as to whether or not I was in the will of God. Somebody said, well, if you're in the perfect will of God and you're willing and obedient, everything's going to work out right and he'll meet every need. Most people think that, don't you? That if you're in the will of God, it's just going to work out. You still got to believe. If you don't believe, even though you're in the perfect will of God, it still won't work right. You've got to appropriate what belongs to you. Some folks think these things will just fall on you automatically like ripe cherries off a tree. But they won't. The Bible says, but without faith it is impossible to please him. He that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. God is a faith God. Faith has something to do with whether or not you receive the blessings of God. He said, I had all my figures in front of me, and I just brought them to the Lord in prayer. And I said, here they are. Here's my gross income for the past year. If I'd stayed with my church, and they wanted me to stay, I'd have made $1,200 more. Now, this is back in 1949, 1950. 
Plus, besides getting that $1,200 less, I had to pay my own rent for my family while I was traveling before I had a parsonage furnished, including all the utilities paid. But Plus, we had much more to eat before because a lot of folks would just bring us something every time they came to church. Sometimes we'd go visiting and come back and find an icebox full of food. The people in that church were nice. They were good to us. And about half of what we ate was furnished. <clears throat> I continued talking to the Lord. Now then, you said if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. That's Isaiah 119. I'm sure not eating the good of the land. And I'm not wearing the good of the land either. And if you want to eat the good, I know you want us to wear the good too. And if you want us to eat the good of the land, doesn't that mean you'll prosper us? I added, if you want us to eat the good and wear the good, I know you want us to drive the good, and I've never had anything like a new car. That's ridiculous. I've never had that. And the only car I ever had this year, I wore out and just absolutely ran it ragged. I didn't even have a spare tire. And the four tires that were on it were all baldies. The car was in such ill repair, I just sold it for junk and didn't even get enough out of it to pay what I owed. I had three notes, and I had... I got, hadn't gotten, I got enough money out of the car to pay the interest on the notes to renew them. I paid nothing on the principal. And then I had enough to buy the kids a few school clothes. I said to the Lord, my children are not adequately clothed or fed, but you said if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. I fasted and prayed for about that for three days. And on the third day, the Lord spoke to me and said, trouble with you is you don't practice what you preach. I held my stomach. I said, Lord, you hit me a low blow. I came, I came to my defense, as most of us would. I said, I do practice what I preach. He said, trouble with you is you preach faith, but you don't practice faith. I can just hear him saying to him, come here. <laughs> Why, Lord, I said, I do practice faith. All these years I've got my healing. I've always received my healing. Actually, I've never been sick. I've either get healed or begin to amend immediately. <clears throat> and I'm raising my kids up that way, and they always receive healing. All our children ever cost us, medically speaking, was $37.50. He said, when my son was born, the doctor charged $25, and that was the total price. He didn't even give me a cut. That's hard for some folks to realize because it costs a little bit more than that now raise to have a child. When our daughter Pat was born, the doctor charged $12.50. I was pastor in a different church when she was born. The doctor gave all pastors a 50% discount. <clears throat> now, don't misunderstand me. When the children got old enough to start school, we always took them to the doctor and had them examined. But there was never anything wrong with them, and the doctor didn't charge us anything. He just gave us the shots that they needed to start school, and there wasn't anything wrong with them. I remember when Ken was 12 years old. He had the mumps for 45 minutes. We prayed, and they left him. He went right on to school the next day. You see, a lot of times we just believe things have to be like they are, but they don't have to be that way. So we raised our children to walk in divine health. I used my faith to believe for their healing while those children were young. But when they got older, they had to believe God for themselves. I couldn't carry him any longer. I brought up the fact to the Lord, yes, he said, sure, you practice your faith when it comes to healing, and that's commendable. But that's as far as you ever went with your faith. He said, faith is the same in every realm and in every sphere. Now, you only use faith as far as salvation, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and healing are concerned. But faith is the same in the financial realm. Write that in your notes. Faith is the same in the financial realm. <clears throat> the Lord continued. Now then, if it were healing that you needed for your own body, you'd just claim by faith, go out and publicly announce that you're healed and go right on preaching. And many times in the past, every symptom would disappear while you were preaching. You've got to do the same thing when it comes to finances. I said, all right, Lord, I'll do that. The Lord said, but there's a matter here that's keeping it from working for you. Do you see that you, that text you quoted me? If you believe, if you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land in Isaiah 119. Sometimes we glibly bring God's word to him, and sh he'll sure keep his word if we measure up to it. He's, yes, sir, I said, that's right. Well, he said that scripture said, if you be willing and obedient, you've been obedient. You've always talked about the fact that you're obeying me, but you know you just never have been fully willing. I want to tell you I got willing in 10 seconds. Don't tell me it takes long to become willing because I know better. I just made a little adjustment down the inside of me and I was willing. I'll tell you 
why it takes so long with some folks, and it's that they're hard-headed and stubborn. After I made that adjustment to become both willing and obedient, I said, Lord, now I'm willing. I've been obedient all the time because you already told me that I have, but now I'm willing, so I fill the bill. Praise God, I'm ready to eat the good of the land. The Lord said, okay, now I know you're willing. Now then, I'll tell you what to do. First, don't ever pray about money. That is in the sense that you've been praying about it. The Lord wasn't telling me not to pray. He just was telling me not to pray about money the way I'd been praying. Prayer is a subject that is misunderstood by a lot of folks. For example, someone said that praise is the highest type of prayer because prayer is really fellowshipping with God. So when you're praising God, you're praying in the highest sense. That's true. But a lot of times what we call prayer isn't prayer. So many times we think of prayer only as asking God for something. You've heard the saying, my name is Jimmy and I'll take all you give me. <laughs> or we're like the old farmer who always prayed, God bless me, my wife, my son, John, his wife, us four, and no more. And we think that's prayer. But if we're praying that way, we're, all we're doing is mouthing words. The Lord said to me, don't ever pray about money anymore the way you've been praying about it. I asked him, well, what am I going to do? He said, the money you need is down there. It's not up here in heaven. I'm not going to rain any money down from heaven because if any money came raining down from up here, it'd be counterfeit, and I'm not a counterfeiter. <clears throat> you see, I put everything you need in the earth. I made it all, and I didn't make it for the devil and his crowd. So many times people think, you know, you ought not to have anything if you're living for God. You're a Christian. You ought, not, you ought to go through life with the soles of, of your shoes and the top of your hat and the seat of your britches worn out, living on Barely Get Along Street, way down at the end of the block, right next to Grumble Alley. And that's supposed to be a sign of humility. No, it isn't. It's a sign, it isn't a sign of humility. It's a sign of ignorance of God's Word. God said to me, you read in my word in Psalm 50, 10 through 12. Psalm 50, verse 10 through 12, where it says, Every beast of the forest is mine and the cattle upon a thousand hills. The world is mine and the fullness thereof. Haggai 2.8 says, The silver is mine and the gold is mine. All of it. Haggai 2.8 all the silver, all the gold is mine. It's mine because I created it. I didn't make it for myself. I made it for my man, Adam. I said, Adam, I give you dominion over all the works of my hands. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. The Lord continued, originally Adam was to dominate this world. He had dominion over the cattle on a thousand hills. He had dominion over the silver and the gold. He had dominion over the world and the fullness thereof. But Adam committed high treason. He became a traitor, sold out to Satan, and Satan became the god of this world. 2 Corinthians 4, 4 calls Satan the god of this world. So Satan is dominating the world because Adam gave him permission to do it by committing high treason. Satan is dominating the world. He's dominating the silver, dominating the gold, and dominating the cattle on a thousand hills too. All the commodities he's dominating. But Jesus came to redeem us from the hand of the enemy, thank God. And in the name of Jesus, we have the authority to claim the money that we need. The Lord said to me, whatever you need, claim it in Jesus' name. You say, Satan, take your hands off my money because it's Satan that's keeping it from coming. It's not me that's keeping it from coming. It's demonic hindrance, demonic containment. Satan, take your hands off my money. It's not me keeping your children from being fed adequately. It's not me keeping your children from being clothed adequately. I saw it. I got the light on it. Praise God. I remember when I first put into practice what the Lord had shown me, I did it with fear and trembling. When I received this revelation, I was holding a meeting in a little church down in East Texas, and I'd preached there for about a year, and they'd given me, the year before, and they'd given me about $57.15 a week for two weeks. <laughs> That's a lot of money back then. That sure seems like a little now. They'd give me a total of $114.30 for two weeks. I got one minute left. I got to finish the story. This was more than 50 years ago. I knew that if they thought that I had adequately, they adequately paid me at $57 a week, I would have, it'd have to be God for me to get what I needed to meet my budget. 
there was just a small group of them, and they thought $50 a week was just fine. They thought it was big pay for any preacher. So I said, all right, Lord, I just proved out that here this church, I'm claiming $150 this week. Now, I knew that if you suggested to this church that they pay even $75, they'd fall over backwards. So if you had suggested $100, they'd say, well, that would take a miracle. And if you said $150, they'd say, God himself couldn't do that. In other words, that would have been beyond their wildest imagination. And I knew that if I told the pastor what I was believing for, it would have scared him. So I said, during the meeting, don't put any pressure on the folks for money. Don't say who will give this and who will give that and all that. Sometimes the past, the pastor would spend a long time on the offering if the church was running short on finances. I just told him, just pass the plate. That's all. Just give the people a chance to give. And so I held fast to my confession and said, Satan, take your hands off my money. And after I'd been in that meeting for a few days, the pastor asked me to stay another week. The Lord told me to stay 10 days total, so I changed what I had claimed and said, Now, Lord, in Jesus' name, I'm claiming $200 for the 10 days. When it was all over, the pastor handed me an offering. It came to $240.15. The pastor said, That is the most we've ever done. I don't understand it. I just can't figure it out. I went to another church. It wasn't a large church at all, and they only ran about 90 in Sunday school, but a few more than, than that attended the night services. And I said to this pastor, now be sure not to put any pressure on the people. Just pass the offering plate and give them a chance to give. So the very next week, I was at this church. After all the money had come in, they gave it to me and said, now you know, brother, we've never paid anybody this much money. Do you know how much money came in for you this week? Here's more than $280. We averaged $90 a week. The pastor continued. We had one minister come preach who was in a bind financially because of some bills he had to pay. I got up in front of the congregation. It took me 45 minutes of asking to get people to finally give him $140 for the week. And here I haven't said a word, and you've got more than $280. I just don't understand it. I said, that's all right, brother. I understand it thoroughly. I had some of the most unusual experiences back then in the area of finances and you've, that you've ever seen. And I experienced God's blessing financially in some of the most unlikely places because God's word works. We're going to talk tomorrow night about holding fast to that, which is good. Let me give you a quick little story in my own personal life along this line. Now, this is 50 years ago, and a man that's in the ministry. Well, ever since the day that Brother Copeland stuck his finger in my face and said... God's got a million ways to get you a million dollars. I looked at him, I thought, I'll take one way to get 3,500 right now. <laughs> Listen to me. <clears throat> I love the whole concept of debt freedom. Don't you? Yep. I love being free of debt. I had a little nest egg of money one time and went and talked to my financial advisor up here, Ned Fowler. And you know what he said to me? He said, before you invest that in anything, just pay your house off. He said, because you want to invest in something, you want to get maybe 5 or 6% interest, which is unheard of right now. And if you put, say, $10,000 in something, it gives you 5 to 6% interest. He said, but then you're paying that much interest on your house. He said, you're looking for something to invest in that draws you money back. But right now, you're someone's investment. You're giving them your money. I thought, suddenly I felt like I've been handled by a rapist. I thought, I'm someone else's investment. That just kept ringing in my ear. I'm someone else's investment. I'm a good investment for someone because I'm paying them my money. I'm a very good investment for someone. Suddenly, I've been, I've been invested in. I felt, I didn't know if I was invested or molested, but I felt like it felt like the same. So I thought, he said, just pay all that off, and then you start at zero, and then start investing. So I was determined, and we plugged away until got the house paid off. Well, now, last year, first of the year, usually between Christmas and New Year's during my winter summit, I'll pray about things. And this time last year, not this past year, the year before, I said, Lord, I'm up here at the winter summit. It just doesn't seem right that this summit is still has money owed on it. You gave this to me. Won't you pay it off for me? And you know what he did? He dropped a house in my lap in March at my birthday. That still blows me away. Can't hardly, can't hardly talk about that getting a lump in my throat. 
we bought that thing and we, well, didn't we? We renovated it. Oh, didn't we? And we furnished it. Oh, didn't we? And we rented it. Oh, didn't we? And we sold it. Oh, didn't we? Oh, my God. And now all I have to do is just stroke a check and pay off the winter sun. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, you know, we're going to make sure we see to Caesar what belongs to Caesar first. We'll see to him first. I got to April 15th. But I'm going to go ahead and stroke that thing in style. And go, you know what? When, when, I, when I came home after paying my house off, I pulled in the driveway and looked. I just looked at it. I got out and shut the door and looked at it. Listen. You belong to me. <laughs> so I sang to it. You're mine. I walked in there and I said, You see that faucet right there? That's mine. I'm going to get to do that soon. You see that hardwood floor? Everything I'm stepping on belongs to me. Then I got to talking like a rich man. I got to saying things kind of funny. We got to go home. It's 806, but I'll tell you these funny little things. There's a man by the name of Tom Ashley that cuts my grass at home. And Jerry Hansen would cut my grass at the cabin. At the, and then Danny Harper cuts the grass all here at church. So between this four acres, the two and a half up there, and the half acre at home, I got a lot of grass that he's cut. And three different men cut the grass. And so one day I was sitting there at the house, and I had a little glass in my hand with a stem, and I said, Ashley's coming to do the lawn. <laughs> yes, Harper will be doing the lawn at the church. Yes, Hanson is cutting the grass at the winter summit. Hanson and Harper and Ashley. <laughs> it's just fun to do. It's just fun. Say it. Everything I have belongs to me. I owe, I owe nothing. I only owe the love of God. I owe the love of God. In Jesus' name. Jesus. We're going to talk a little bit more about this tomorrow night. We'll be back tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. Don't miss it. It's going to be dynamite.